Welcome. Hi, Senator Kruger. Um, I'm so happy that you could join us uh, this afternoon. Um, as you know, I'm Kate Carrera. I'm the Deputy Director at Environmental Advocates. Um, and in this, you know, first of all, I hope that you're well um, and managing. Yes, despite the background, which I'm doing for my own entertainment and cheer, I'm actually not on a beautiful beach somewhere. I am, you know, staying at home, doing all the things we're supposed to be doing. Um, but zooming and calling and emailing all day work does not stop. Exactly. But a little beach scene isn't terrible. No, it's great. And I really appreciate it. It's really um, this whole transition to kind of online is um, interesting, fun, and also, ch I mean, challenging in so many ways. But so many ways. really appreciate you taking the time. Um, as you know, the 50th anniversary of Earth Day is is almost upon us. And while we were excited to kind of celebrate the occasion at the Capitol with an Earth Day agenda and a big event, um, we've now the community's kind of shifted to this kind of online forum. And we thought it'd be a great idea to get different legislators and, and leaders, um, state leaders thoughts about Earth Day and, and what it means to them. And we've had a significant year last year in terms of environmental um, progress and certainly of course over the 50 years although um, the crises and issues we face now are, are, are equally important and different um, so yeah we just love to ask you know in in reflection what does Earth Day mean mean to you well I think that the value of Earth Day is it does make us stop like once a year to think through what it means to us that we have this earth, we know it's at risk. There's nobody left on this planet who doesn't know what risk we're facing. Um, but it sort of to some degree pulls us back in and forces us to stop and say, okay, what are we doing about it? Is it enough? The answer is pretty much no for most of us. And what more can we be doing? And I think particularly during this COVID pandemic crisis, it's really important to remember there are some people in government who are using this opportunity to pull us away from environmental issues and concerns, even though, of course, pandemics probably correlate in some way to the damage we've been doing to our environment and our planet. Um, and we will learn more about that, no doubt, after we've all survived this. So when I read in the paper that the federal government is continuing to quietly undo all of our environmental laws during the middle of a pandemic pandemic, and a um, economic crisis, I'm like, are you kidding? You even have any people left to reverse environmental policy at this time? It is infuriating and that's a message for Earth Day. Don't let them drive us backwards. When I read an article this morning that there are some um, people who are pushing false news that you should go back to plastic bags because the reusable bags could spread COVID. It's like, hello, have you touched a plastic bag you got in the supermarket? It's the same number of people, actually more people, because then the teller is putting the food in the bag, handing it to you. You bring your own bags, you pack your own bags. It's just you touching those products, bringing them home. There is zero evidence that the reusable bags are any more dangerous than any other kind of bag. And since fewer people would come in contact with it, I would argue that in fact, it's just the opposite. And yet when I'm reading news stories, I know somebody's making that stuff up and placing it in our newspapers. And that is despicable since yeah. we're here on Earth Day. That's another example of don't let this crisis keep us from remembering the core assignment. Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely right. I mean, it's it is sad that we've come 50 years and you know when i reflect it's like okay earth day started we had rivers on fire and we had you know toxic waste just spilling into people's basements and we have a new insidious crisis climate change and you know um these other other things they're not they're equally challenging and critical they're just different um and the reports from the federal government are it's just um 
it's astounding that this is being used. And, and the other point that I've been making is not only are these environmental laws protecting the environment, they're fundamentally protecting public health. So it doesn't, it doesn't sync up that you would be reversing things that protect public health when we are in a public health crisis at the moment. Exactly. I mean, if you look at the pattern of the people who are getting the sickest and in fact are being killed by this disease, it's people with respiratory illnesses mm -hmm. and, immuno and weakened immune systems. And we absolutely know that what we have done to our environment is creating um, respiratory illness. We know that the number of cancers in our environment that then need to be treated in ways that weaken the immune system are directly correlated to our environment. So please, 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 no one think fake news is suddenly real news. There are direct correlations. Um, and the more we do to save our planet, to improve the conditions of our air and water, the less likely we all are to be um, ill on our own, creating more of a chance that a pandemic can wipe us out. So we have to do everything we should be doing from a public health perspective, from a personal health perspective, and not forget that our actions as a planet are creating the opportunities for these things to happen. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, maybe I would like to try to keep some positivity. It's hard yeah. these days, right? Um, so I guess no, one of my beach scene, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It actually, it's making me feel very relaxed. So I, I do appreciate it. Um, one thing, and you're such a, been such a great environmental champion um, in the Senate for, for so many years and had a number of great environmental policies that you've, um, you know, spearheaded. And I guess one question would be, what is the, what is the one policy you're the most proud of? And the second part to that question is what, what are you excited about tackling um, next? Well, you know, I view myself as a legislator to be part of a team a team of Senate Democrats and a team of the two houses of the legislature, who I think have very proudly had quite a few real victories on the environmental front in the last couple of years. And we have made New York State um, have the strongest climate change laws in the country, which we see as an opportunity to challenge the other 49 states to push ahead of us so we can be competitive and then push ahead of them again mm -hmm. in the time frame for when we are moving to green energy, um, when we are the time frame for requiring renewables um, as opposed to the use of fossil fuels. Um, something I'm very proud of, even though it still does not pass, is my bill to uh, require divestment from fossil fuel companies in our pension plans. You know, we've been talking about it now for five years. So even though we haven't passed the law in New York State, we have both the state controller dramatically changing the way he approaches investments um, in fossil fuels, even though I still believe in my divestment bill is the right answer. The city of New York's pensions are going down a similar path other countries and states and cities and major institutions who wouldn't have imagined doing this five years ago are now divesting as we speak. And I think it's because we built a movement of momentum of advocates and government working together to say our future, our retirement funds can't be put at risk in the kinds of stocks that we know are going to have to crash at some time because we can't possibly even allow legally these fossil fuels to be taken from our earth and survive. So I'm passionate continuing into the future about the importance of divestment for everyone from fossil fuels. Um, again, I'm so excited about our potential here in New York State for the growth of offshore wind. Um, I'm excited about it, particularly because despite this beach not being in New York, to be honest, mm -hmm. we have so much beachfront in New York State. We have so much access to the Atlantic Ocean, which is ideal for offshore wind. I've been watching Europe speed ahead jealously saying, we can do that. We can produce offshore wind. 
with a tiny footprint and increase the number of homes that get their electricity um, from a kind of power source that we're not going to run out of and does no long-term harm to our planet. So we're getting there and we're speeding up the process by which we get there. And that's very exciting to me as well. Yeah, that's great. That is exciting. And hopefully with the new siting um, proposals that will, you know, really um, help us achieve those goals. Exactly. And that's a big win for solar energy as well. I didn't yeah. mean to overlook it. Um, no, but, no, absolutely. Right. But the siting changes we were able to negotiate in the budget I do believe mean we will see more opportunity um, both for growth in solar farms throughout upstate New York and also for an improved energy grid because it's not just making the energy in the green environmentally sustaining ways. It's also having the ability to move it from different parts of the state. 